It's the Guru Steiny Guru Steiny Guru Steiny Show. Let's go. Oh, the things that we can and can't say, Gu. Well, I'm going to say this. What? Tell me if you remember this, because you're my guy. My boy Tone, he's a P1. It's a bit hazy. He calls you intelligent, and he loves you on the mic. Thanks, Tone. So he texts me again. He goes, Evan's in his bag on fire. Last time I texted you that, you made it sound like I was talking about him. <laughs> I go, Tone, relax. <laughs> Step back. I told Evan the great compliment you gave him. I just did it now, but he goes, Evan is shining right now. That's what he said. I go, Evan, you got you got a fans, well, baby. Yeah, thanks, Tone. No, yeah. look, dude, you, you do a great job of just It's I mean, not basically... about me. It's you, Evan. I am the system of this show. <laughs> Boy. No, but you're Rod Strickland. I mean, you just you give me pass and you're right in the pocket. You Dude, I saw highlights of him. He was special. I've only How soon I've we only seen highlights of him. Strickland was a bad boy. There's a lot of great guards that yeah. have gotten lost in history. Kenny that are out Anderson. There. Kenny Anderson. My, one of my favorites when I was young. This is aside. We'll get back to baseball yeah. in a minute. We got time. Hey, yeah. Yeah. Far on. Now, uh, Ray for Alston. Love, oh, man. Love Skip to my love. Yes. Love Skip to my loo. That guy was a beast. All right. Evan in for Stiney. Again, he'll be back next week. He's out in London town. And uh, we got Daryl the Guru Johnson with you as always. Speaking of Daryl's, uh, let's, let's, let's kick off this segment with a Daryl and Alameda. Uh-oh. Let's talk about the Giants and their season thus far. Daryl, how's it going, man? How are you? Hey, guys. I'm doing well. I just have to ask you guys, at the beginning of the season, what exactly were your expectations? Because I looked at the team... There was literally no speed on the team. Mm. Speed kills in sports, all around any sport. No one was bringing in a hot or a 300 average or anything like that. And then you keep focusing about Soleil. How do we know and his agent didn't ask to be released or not released, but traded during the the Mm. deadline? I mean, why would you want to stay? And when you talk about Duvall, Duvall looks totally disinterested in the team. Man, man, he does. I mean, who 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 exactly is he bonding with on the team? Wow, it's like you got to you just put together a bunch of guys, middle aged guys, and said, "Hey, make it happen." And you got (laughs) to—I hate to say—but an average manager, and you're asking him to make something out of nothing. I mean, you should, my expectations were not high when I saw what they were rolling out, period. I appreciate the call, but I'll say this to his call, Evan. I think everybody was pretty optimistic. And, and Farhan, we were all throwing bricks and rocks at him, like, what's going on? Nobody will dance with you. And then a flurry of move came, moves yeah. came, and this is Norm Johnson. Evan, never mistake activity for achievement. But I did that with the Giants because Farhan got somebody to say, I'll come. Now, we'll talk about Chapman and Snell only because of the relationship they had with with, with, with Melvin. Uh, Melvin. But whatever, it worked. But what this caller, and he knows baseball, I do have to take issue with a little bit. Speed, you can look around the game. The ball's going out the park. That's where it's at. Yeah. But I love me some speed. And average, average is not where it's at. It's the ball going out of the park, but I love me some average. So if you could catch my drift, Evan, and to the caller's point, the Giants on paper had a guy, Solaire, that could hit 35 home runs. The point you make about Doval, I'm with you, but he had been stellar here the last couple years, so who was to say that that was going to evaporate? But the bottom line is I got excited because Farhan was able to put together uh, some moves and got a hefty payroll and I bit hook, line, and sinker. Well, that's why I, I wasn't as high on the Giants as maybe some around the station. Like, I heard people throwing around 90 wins. And, oh, boy, I uh, don't think I You know, the that. automatic playoff berth. No, but could this team, I think their over-under is 83 and a half. I thought that was pretty accurate. Like, 84 wins is just about right yeah. for, that, that, for that team for me. And right now, it doesn't look like they're going to get there. 84 wins is not something you should strive to achieve, but coming off a season in which you were, I think, had 79 wins, that's a five-win improvement. That's a little bit better. And that might, 84 wins is what the Diamondbacks had last year, got them into the World Series. So that's where I was at with this team. But I did expect them to make the postseason, to at least be involved in the mix. And I guess technically they're not out of it. But every other team in front of them won yesterday. The right now, I think, sit five back from the five, wild card. Five, Evan. 
And it doesn't look like things are getting any better because, again, it, it, talking about how to improve the team, your chance to improve the team was yesterday. And you can't hit. This thing is ongoing. But I got to bring this up because a caller alluded to it. Do you think that Solaire, forget the audacity from Farhan when we got the best rotation in baseball, the way Solaire was playing, do you think he even went to his agent or would – I don't know – if you would have did it, but when I'm not at my best, I'm damn sure not playing the car to get me out of here. He brought that up, but I don't think that happened with Solaire at all. No, but it, there there were too many signings that were there was risk involved, honestly, in all of like if if you really want me to to start poking holes in every single signing, I can do it. Chapman was coming off of what I think a hip injury last year finger issue early but only 7 15 17 home runs last year 16 hasn't been a great hitter at the plate with power in a few seasons um you look at Blake Snell well he's a guy that always in my he always starts slow especially if he doesn't have a, a spring train you can't expect a pitcher to all of a sudden just dominate out of the gates in April and May him getting hurt was unfortunate but th- that also has happened throughout his career mm. he, I don't think he's ever thrown more than 180 innings in a season so Blake Snell is not a guy that's going to give you a bulk. Um, Jung Hu Lee, I mean, it sucks that he got hurt because I would love to see one him. Of the, the, that's a, that was the biggest roll of the dice, right? Well, it was also a six-year investment, and that's a player who's played in Korea before. You know, you don't know how he's going to yeah. face against Major League Baseball players. Jorge Soler, yes, every season that he's remained healthy, he's actually the most perplexing one because when he's been healthy, oh my gosh, man, he has produced. This is the first season in which he's been healthy for the majority of the season thus far and has not done diddly squat. So that one also had some holes because he's kind of an injury-prone player. He's only played four full seasons in 10. So you can go down the list. Robbie Raves. You made it. You went out and acquired him. He's coming off of Tommy John surgery. How, I don't know how he's going to respond. Man. You know, you knew that Alex Cobb was coming off of injury. You were expecting him to be back, but when Jordan Hicks? Okay, you signed him for four years, but was it as a reliever? Was it to become a starter? How are you going to make that transition? Because it looks like it might fall off. Yeah. I'm not so sure. There are all these different moves that they made that, in an ideal situation, could produce a playoff team. But there were too many, I don't know, trap doors, quite honestly, built into all of these players. And I think that's why they were able to get them in the first place. But trying to cobble together a lot of wild cards means that, yeah, you might hit a flush, you might hit a straight, but you also might up just end up with a bunch of 7-2 offsuits and be forced to go right back to reshuffling the deck, which is what they're doing right now, it appears. No doubt. No doubt. You cannot paint a picture or get on any microphone or podcast or phone or talk to a friend and have a conversation about the Giants got better at the deadline by letting Solaire, who was struggling, but, you know, it looked like he was coming on, uh, letting him walk. Uh, can I read this to you, Evan, because kind of hit me. Oh, go for it. Uh, Melvin has made a living out of making something out of nothing, not the other way around. I like that, but here, I, I mean... Well, Evan, this, come on now. Well, he's also made something out of something. I mean, two years ago, he was in the NLCS with the Padres team that was that beat two 100-win teams in the National League. Uh, last year, they fell flat on their face. But this year, yeah. I mean, okay, yes, he did make something out of nothing in regards to contracts. But if you look at the teams that Melvin has got to the postseason, it not, not, I'm not even talking about an Oakland. You can yeah. go back even uh, to Arizona. You can go back to Sunny Gray. You can go back Seattle. to Seattle. All yeah, right. the, the teams that he has had that have been successful, sure, he's extracted the most out of, but they've also been good. Right. They, they've also had players and players that might not be compensated, but you can see the talent. You can see the skill. Right now, the 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 Giants are back to this place of just hoping that their young players there might be something there. And that's why it is confusing as to the tone set by Farhan yesterday. Let's let's just take a okay. look or t- yeah, take right a listen here. to um, him talking about Blake Snell and what it would have taken essentially to move off. Trading him would have changed the course of this season, where we still believe in what we can accomplish. And again, you know, leaning into our youth, leaning to our rotation is really the plan. Um, so if someone really came to us with something we thought could really change our future, you know, then and you're making that sort of trade off of uh, the present versus, you know, 2026, 2027, you know, that that's challenging. But uh, again, I think the way things have come together, this rotation, 
it was really going to have to be something that we thought would do just that, just like really change the course of future years for this organization and not just be sort of a package of prospects that, you know, would slide into this slot and that slot on your baseball America list, you know, and, uh, and that just, that just didn't happen. One but, foot in, one yeah. foot out. Wow. And, and now you're facing fast forwarding, Evan, uh, getting nothing for Snell if he decides, he decides he wants to go somewhere else. So I would take something for, you know, something's better than nothing. But if that were to present itself, that, that would just be a, ugly. If, if he decides he doesn't want to be here, and then you say the reason you didn't move him is you weren't overwhelmed. But, man, if you could have got something, if that ends up being the truth, he walks for nothing. How bad does that look? It, it does look bad. That's why the, the body language doesn't match the messaging. Because if you are to clear space for your young players, right, that's why they traded Cobb to provide a runway for Birdsong. And they got rid of Solaire to save some money, but to provide a runway for Luciano. Okay, that tells me that you have some belief in your young players. That's a direction. Okay, so why then are you expecting these two relatively unknown players that have talent to not just replace the production, but elevate it? And then you're going to keep Snell because you want to make a push to the postseason but you're not willing to move off of him for a package of prospects, but you're actually promoting your prospects from within, and you're trying to empower your prospects. I, I, I don't really know what they're trying to accomplish. Man. It feels like they want to have their cake and eat it too, but the cake is actually more of like a yogurt. Like it, it's, not, it's not what you think it is. Parfait. A par- I wish. That's, yeah. I, that was actually pretty good. <laughs> but you know, like, you, you know what I'm saying? It, it, just, it feels like he's talking out of both sides of his mouth. And I'm not really sure I heard much of anything on why they chose to not trade Blake Snell. If you tell me that there wasn't a package out there that you thought was good enough for him, that makes sense. What I want to hear, because I, I, I don't know, this was my takeaway yesterday. It feels like they're looking towards 2025. So if your reason for keeping Snell is you believe that you can get him back in the fold next year, well then, if I look at the rotation next season, and I see a healthy Ray... I see a healthy Snell, I see Webb, I see Birdsong, I see Harrison, maybe Hicks, I'm not sure. But that's a rotation I can envision being one of the best in baseball. But you still got to score. But No, but but even currently, th- th- that rotation is not mm. where you need it to be. Mm. Because Snell has been hurt a lot this season. He's finally, he's come out of it now. But, I don't know, he might regress a little bit. Robbie Ray's working his way back from Tommy John's surgery. He's not going to be the best version of himself this season. Birdsong, who's 22 years old, is probably not going to be the best version of himself this season. Harrison, you could say the same. Those guys are getting to their innings limit. Like, this is not a team that, in my opinion, is built based on what he's telling us to lean all the way in and have the rotation carry them because there are issues with each and every one of their pitchers. So if that's the strength of your team... Like I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I just I don't see it, and that's why I believe that there's a disconnect between the front office and the locker room, and the Giants right now as a franchise just feel disconnected. Mm, and that's why I brought up. Well said. That's why I brought up Doval. You know, and again, you got to take accountability for one's action and what you do and what you bring to the yard every day. But something just seems. I'm looking at him, Evan, and I'm like, hmm. This is not who he's been, and everything that you just said, you're right. And that's why I was offended by what Farhan said about the best rotation in baseball when guys haven't even been healthy enough to go through, you know, series to where, wow, you know, it's been a super short sample size. And then Robbie Ray yesterday, that wasn't nothing to write home about, but we understand it, brother trying to work it out. But for you to sit there and tell the masses, you know, like it's a definite and we've seen it, that just – that, that shocked me, but Evan, he also used this these numbers, 2026. Like, right oh, now, boy. I'm thinking, like, this thing is going to get worse before it gets better. And I think that started yesterday at the deadline, and that's why I'm feeling today on this hump day, Wednesday, that, dude, hard run DMC, hard times are coming, and it's going to get more uglier than it is now, especially if one of, one-third of your big three in regard to pitchers decides to take his services and opt out next year. Like, that's a reality. Yes, and it's one that, again, would just set you back. That 
They well, man. For every step they take forward, they either take one or two steps back. You know, it's not the other way around the way you want it to be. Uh, Carlito's been waiting patiently. Is Carlito. that Alameda? What's going on, Carlito? How are you? Hello, gentlemen. Hello, gentlemen. Uh, listen, guys, I'm, I'm going to put the rat on the table. Uh, six years is too long. Orhan Zaidi is a nice guy. Brought to you by I, I, would have, I would love to have a road trip with him. He, he's a nice guy, but, but he's got to go. And here's the thing, Guru. I wouldn't wait till the end of the year. I'd get rid of him right now. Thank you. Well. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, That ship left the dock. You had a great chance yesterday, right? <laughs> well, every day is a great chance to win uh, a game, but again, that's why. Like, okay, so all right, you're a gambling man. Yeah, uh, I, I bet on occasion, mainly the ponies. But the USA A's were plus twenty nine today. South Sudan, twelve o'clock. Go ahead. Didn't they only win that game by <laughs> one in the <laughs> exhibition? LeBron had to make a left handed layup, dude. That was real close. <laughs> But the Go biggest ahead. upset since Miracle on Ice. My bad. Go ahead, e. The Sudanese, they got yeah. some players. Yes, they do. I know Steiny's hot on them. But the A's were plus 165 yesterday. So, and th- you said it might be good value. I heard that. That's a, that's a pretty big get. Like, I don't think the A's are a great team. They're playing well, but I don't think they're a good team overall. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. I would take that value. You know, t- tonight might be a little bit different, but that, that's that's part of the issue right now. No matter who the Giants play, you could see them losing. Like, I know they just beat the Rockies before games. If they lost one of those games, you, eh, yeah, I could, I could probably see it. And that's why I'm mad at myself for playing the schedule game of, oh, we play the Nationals, we play the Rockies. Evan, guess what I figured out? And, I, and I'm proud. You are those teams. That's who you are. You are three games under 500. you You've never won. You had a chance for the first time this year to win five in a row, Evan. Again. And you just got embarrassed. In it. That's what that was last night to me. And I don't want to go down this avenue, but I'm sitting there watching the game with Pops. Evan, you were there, and I'm going to ask you this, not putting you on the spot. Bombs away. It looked like there were a couple seats available. I, how was the, the population, would you say, yesterday? I mean, it was a, a good crowd. Okay. For, right. I'm just asking. It was a good crowd for a Tuesday night, but was it packed? No. Okay. And I think the more damning part about it, and we've seen this more often than not with, I don't want to say rivalry teams, but I mean, the Dodgers, like the, the aesthetic of the entire bleachers being just a, oh my gosh. all blue yeah. stuck out, uh, stood out a few weeks ago. Yesterday, I feel you could hear let's go Oakland chants. And not that... Look, if a team's playing well, that's going to happen. But it was because the Giants fans were understandably deafening. There was there was nothing to cheer for. I get you had. I think they had one hit through the first with three innings. But you don't need base so runners. Yeah, and, you don't need him. And no Giants fan. You, not that they should. Nobody knows who's pitching for the A's. Nobody knows who J.P. Sears is, and or should they? He's not a bad pitcher, but he's a jag. He's just a guy. And this is why, Evan, I want to apologize to the three, Shaskies, like Thanksgiving turkey. the Bontes. Um, I don't know where Lubman stands. I kind of do, but it, he's real where it fluctuates. But, Evan, to all the fans that say, you know what, to hell with that third wild card. We're better than that. This team is not ready to do what Arizona did. I, I don't think that way. I'm not built that way. Give me in and give me in and let's see what happens. But, Evan, it's all starting to come into focus for me that, you know what, this team is not good enough. So how can I have more passion and root for the math when the guys that matter the most don't do their part night in and night out? They were getting dominated yesterday by the ace pitcher, JP. Yes, they were. And look, t- tonight they could bounce back and get a win, but I'm not sure it erases. Again, it's it's and not just about ground. the game. Yeah. It, it, it's about what the game followed. Bad, it's bad. about what preceded the game, which was... A lifeless deadline, a lifeless press conference, and a lifeless performance. Dad, thank you. All. I mean, that's the holy trinity of <laughs> lifelessness. Yeah, all negative. And we saw it play out back to back to back. And there hasn't really seemed to be an answer. I'm trying to find one. I mean, seriously, we, we come in here, we got four hours every single yeah. day. I'm trying to find an answer for you of what Farhan did yesterday, what he told us yesterday, and what it means. And the, the the circle of life with the Giants right now, or the circle of lifelessness with the Giants right now, as we keep coming back to, I can't really figure it out. Man. Where is this thing going? And I think it's time the guy that's in charge of figuring out where they're going, I, I think he's on his ninth life, Evan, and it's time just to hit a reset. 
And the reset is new hope, uh, new opportunity, benefit of the doubt, because I just don't know how anybody could muster giving Farhan another opportunity in regard to another year to come back and say, you know what? I failed in seven years. I can, this is the one. I just, it's old, it's stale. And I get the guys that the giant fans that don't even want to see this team kind of limp into the offs, Evan. I get it. It was a deadline that left a lot to be desired. Let's wrap, uh, let's get one more call in. Uh, Heartbreak right. Dizzy's out in Hayward. What's going on, Heartbreak? How are you? Hey, what's up, fellas? Thank you for taking my call. Appreciate y'all, man. Hey. Yes, sir. Hey, just want to uh, throw a couple things out. I'm an A's fan, so, I mean, you already know how I feel. But um, as far as the Giants, like, I just feel like there's no kind of connection in the locker room, anything. And to me, it's just, they're just boring to watch. And, I mean, that sucks because I'm from the Bay Area, but if they're just, a, I can't sit there and watch the Giants game because it's just, it's just boring as hell to me. And then one last thing I want to throw out there for Guru I actually went to uh, Los Gallos Restaurant, Union City, or Borderline Hayward, Union City, Fairway Park, bro. Okay. They put cheese on my taco. There you no. go, baby. <laughs> Cash me out one time. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's great, Kay. That's a win for the hey, goo. No doubt about it. Thanks, our break. <laughs> no, but he, he actually brings something up that, that you were talking about. The clubhouse, man. Yeah, the clubhouse. But, but I'm going to ask FP today, and I know he can't say a lot, but I, I'm starting to think something's up. But you were comparing the A's and the Giants in, in the green room, and I, th- I thought it was a really good point, is that at the very least, the A's, there's some sort of grit. Like there's some it. sort of fight. It comes through the TV. It's tangible. Man. Now, I think it's because they're kind of in a, we, you know. Against the world? Yeah. Okay, it, and us, it starts us from versus day one. the okay. ownership right. versus front right. office. Right. You know, they've set us up to fail, so we only have one choice to dig ourselves out of It doesn't mean, though, Evan, the Giants can't show their own version of just – they don't seem like they're on the same page. And remember that day I told you against the Yankees that Sunday where Soto hit that bomb? I know we're up against oh it. Oh, my God. Uh, off Duvall. Has and I said Matt Chapman was looking at Duvall like, and I sent the video to Willard and Dibbs. They were on the air, and they they looked at it. Kind of gooey. But I'm telling you, Evan, I saw something, and now I firmly believe there's something not going on in that clubhouse. Am I saying everybody hates everybody? No, but there's something a disconnect when it comes to cohesiveness. And you can't tell me that doesn't follow you on the field. Well, it's funny you bring up the Soto home run off the Doval. And I think that was the blow oh and save gosh. he gave up four runs. There was, I was in the clubhouse after that game. There was something that happened that I thought was a little telling about oh. Camilo Doval. Uh, and I do want to get to that oh, I can't wait. on the other side. I also want to talk about, because Farhan was, again, he was peppered by the media yesterday before the game. Uh, Sam Lubman was in there, asked a really Sammy. nice question. We can get to that. But also, I think. Someone asked an important question, which is basically, where is this team after six years? You know, if, if you're a fan right now, 888-957-9570, where is the team right now after six years? Is it in the same place? Is it in a better place? Is it in a worse place? I think everything's on the table right now as it pertains to Farhan Zaidi. All right, join 95.7 The Game at Harding Park Friday, September 6th for the Pedinelli Financial Partners Golf Tournament benefiting the Autism Society San Francisco Bay Area. You can go to 957thegame.com to learn more. Presented by Atco Pest Control, the Bay Area's locally family-owned pest control company. Also, download the Odyssey app directly from our QR code on both YouTube and Twitch. Brought to you by First NorCal Credit Union. For a low-rate auto loan, apply online or just ask for First NorCal Financing at the dealer. Evan Giddings in for Matt Steinmetz with Gerald the Guru Johnson. We're back after this, 95.7 The Game.